Hey! I've not committed on Alivens yet! And I apologize for having not. Hey, so, yeah, I'm late on this one. So, I had pretty bad writer's block when putting this together, and once I had gotten past it, it was time for Thanksgiving. And my family get-together lasted four days. Anyways, I'm partly still in a turkey and ham leftover coma, so much like you, I can't be arsed to care about any excuse I come up with for being late, so to hell with it. Time for content! Grendel! A frame which, incidentally, I was the model for. The Smo to Gauss's Ornstein, Grendel is what happens when Digital Extremes realizes that after six years, they could make a ninja out of the goddamn Scarecrow from Oz if they wanted to. In fact, here is a recreation of the original thought process behind Grendel's concept. But no, Grindel was a frame that I was really itching to get my hands on from the get-go. Why would you not want to play as a man who's practically a black hole generator? Or the one that goes... And, most importantly, he's just so jolly. Oh, listen to that laugh. Isn't it adorable? Announced alongside Gauss before being delayed because... Mm -hmm. Grendel comes the closest to scratching a concept itch that I've had for a very long time. A grappler frame. A frame that can just take hold of an opponent and toss them around into their frames? Oh yes! Yes, I like that idea very much. I tend to really like the Yeetmeister kind of characters. And yeah, I see the very, very clear difference between lifting up and tossing a schmuck and literally eating them! I'm taking whatever I can get here. Anywho, when Grendel first came out, he was not in the best of states. Low damage and high energy costs being the prevalent complaints for King DDD here. <laughs> Seriously, the best way to play Grendel at the time was just to completely ignore trying to do damage, and instead just let the map do it for you by shooting enemies out of the tile. Which, I mean, undeniably worked, but it also resulted in your drops being casted into oblivion at the same time. So, the man was in a little bit of a pickle here. But then he got buffed. Oh, did he get buffed? And there's kind of a fun story behind those buffs, but we'll get into that later. Point is, Grendel's title of being the Eater of Worlds and everything else is a hell of a lot more literal now. Incidentally, in terms of lore, Grendel just might be the most broken creation the Orkin has ever devised. I say this because the man can eat sentience! The biggest bad of this universe, and this lad just looks at them and is like, Dinner. I, I was doing a Lua mobile defense a few days ago, and some of these pea-headed brainlets decided to come in. And you know what happened to them? also does not give a single iota of a damn in regards to nullifiers as well. Uh, let that sink in. This thing is a controllable black hole that can nullify nullifiers and sentience. How this conflict between space larping children and bionicles continued when the Orkin could have just made an army of Grendels is beyond me, but what do I know? So hey, let's talk about him. And we'll start out slowly with his weakest power, Feast. Now see, what I just did there was actually pretty clever. It's um, it's something called LIE! Feast is just flat out Grendel's best power. I'm just getting that out there right now. It's also the power that Grendel needs to literally function in any other capacity. Prior to its buff, this wasn't much more than an insanely expensive CC power that led into the rest of his kit. It allows Grendel to store enemies in his gut, rendering them non-threats, and he can expel them out by holding the ability button. I mean, it has a solid range to it, but other than that, it wasn't too great. Especially since the energy cost is a little excessive. <gasps> but then, a bald, bearded miracle happened. As mentioned before, Grendel was buffed, and by far the largest one he received was to feast. And now, about that funny story regarding his buffs I mentioned before, yeah, some of those may have been because of me. On Twitter, I posted some hypothetical buffs for the Meatball Man, and sometime afterwards, buffs suspiciously similar to my recommendations were being put into the game. But, but hey, I'm not saying that I'm taking credit for improvements to a frame. I mean, they could just be a coincidence. 
is what I would say if Scott hadn't replied to the tweet and more or less flat out mentioned that they were going to be using some of them. So, in other words, I guess what I'm saying is that I'm the reason that Grendel is good now. Bow to your god! It jokes aside, one of the buffs that I suggested was to make the expel function of Feast, you know, uh, this, into a damage dealing tool. Since it didn't really serve much of a purpose outside of up chucking 40 enemies and causing lag spikes to people playing on their calculators or Google Stadia. Mind you, that is a valid purpose and I fully endorse that use case for it, but anyways, I suggested why not make it deal increased damage the more enemies Grindel upchucks at once, and allow the expel to have a hitbox for enemies that are in front of it. Well, lucky for me, a bald angel made it so. And after the update, it turned Grindel into a shotgun on legs! But instead of pellets or slugs, he fires traumatized dogs and moas! I'm not shitting you! Once Grindel gets about 10 enemies in his stomach, both them and anything caught in the upchuck range is going to be smeared on the walls and ceiling. And a fun fact, his Norse strike buff from his two affects this damage. So there you go if your brain for whatever reason conjures up the thought of, hmm, you know what this could use? Hmm, I don't know. More fucking deeps, Jeff! And see, it's not just the damage that's absurd, but there's also one thing that I may have overlooked while I was suggesting that buff to this power. Remember how I said that Feast has a solid range to it? It rests at 25 meters at base range. And this is pretty typical for CC or buff powers as they tend to need a lot of range to be effective. And since they're not really directly harming enemies, having such a large radius isn't too broken or anything. For example, Radial Disarm can reach about 50 meters. Hildren's Shield Pillage can go even farther. Rhino Stop and Radio Blind also both rest at 25 meters at base, you get the gist. There's exceptions of course, such as Avara Sleep Arrow here, but most powers that don't really do damage to enemies tend to have a lot of range to compensate. It was this bit of information that I completely forgot about when I said I wanted to buff Grendel's 1 into a damage tool! See, a feast, it was meant to be a CC power. It wasn't great at that job due to the energy drain, but it was meant to be one. So they gave it a hefty range of 25 meters. I had forgotten about that. Okay, so what does this mean? Where am I going with this? Well, now we have an ability with a range that can reach as far as 70 goddamn meters, and that same ability can Exodia groups by just holding the button. Grindel is quite literally the Eater of Worlds now, and is also the best shotgun in the game. This man can vor snipe you. And that is probably a new sentence that has probably never been said. So, yeah. A feast may have set the bar pretty high for the rest of his kit, but who cares? I don't. Moving on. Grendel has access to a mix of buffs with Nourish, his second power. Some have very nice benefits, such as increased energy regeneration or additional damage bonuses, and others are Nourished Armor. Nourish is a pretty solid buffing power, and Grendel can grant all three of these buffs to himself and teammates. In terms of usefulness, his energy buff is probably the best of the trio. And as far as I'm aware, it is the only energy regeneration buff in the game. And I'm not talking about energy boosts like Energy Vampire or Harrow's Thorable. I mean, it increases the energy that you generate from other sources. Energy Siphon, Energy Orbs, Energy Pizzas, Rage and Hunter's Adrenaline, if it gives energy, this buff will boost the hell out of it, and my lord is the difference staggering. Which is handy because if you'll recall Feast's energy drain. Oh, and um, these values down here are lying to your face, by the way. I am clearly getting more than 25 energy when picking up an orb, so, so yeah, just something to note. Warframe's UI is broken, who would have guessed it? But I do have one big gripe with the energy buff. You know how his one is a channeled ability? Uh, that's it. Uh, no, I no, I mean that's exactly my pr <laughs> you can't gain energy with a channeled power outside of a few exceptions. So that kind of limits the buff's power somewhat. Since you're not going to be able to get energy back from things like Xenuric Bubble whenever his one is active, which you know is 80% of the time. I'm not sure if this is an oversight on DE's part or not, but on the plus side, you still have Hunter's Adrenaline to work with, and if you're a Grindle that doesn't run it, you're inhuman and I don't want to associate with you. Stop watching the video, you fuck. LEAVE! Strike is a damage buff, which notably also increases ability damage, which means his belch powers become even more absurd. Also neat to note is that this buff applies in the form of a toxin damage buff, so that allows for your weaponry to proc toxin while it's active, and this applies to your teammates as well. So next to having an energy region buff, this makes Grindel a really solid team pick. As for the nourished armor buff, I'm just gonna save myself the extra video editing and say... <laughs> 
No. Though, if there's one thing that I'm surprised has not been changed yet in regards to Nourish, it's its god-awful UI. Hmm, yes, I have an idea. Let's inform the players of the buff they have cycled by changing the 34 by 34 icon all the way down here. That will also be covered by a number 100% of the time. Truly the decision of a 700 IQ mind. I mentioned before how Grindle is the closest thing we have to a grappler right now. And if Feast is the grab, then Regurgitate is the yeet. Poor Regurgitate has found itself in a bit of a weird situation. Because as a damage dealing tool, you have to remember that it's uh, competing with... True, it certainly has a farther range, can't argue with that, and kicking the sentience off the damn moon is now one of my favorite activities. And its damage is by no means bad. With my strike buff up, I can one or two shot most trash mobs up to a pretty respectable level. But that requires me to have roughly 200% power strength, which is kind of pushing it a bit with a frame like Grindle. I will, however, say that it still retains its ability to insta-kill anything regardless of its level by tossing the enemy outside of the map. A niche for sure, but hey, it's there. Better have it than not have it, right? Also, shooting corpus on the walls over a cliff never gets old. Speaking of which, do you like the exciting activity of hitting walls? Do you miss the wonders of 3D Space Cadet Pinball? Is Feast a little too good for you? Have you ever found yourself thinking, man, I wish I could be the shell in the bowling mini game from Mario Party forever, it gets me horny. Well, good news. Oh dear lord, pulverize. Okay, so I knew pretty damn well that this wasn't exactly going to be Grindle's bread and butter power the moment that I saw it. Look at it! It has no style, it has no grace. But with that said, for me personally, I am of the opinion that a frame can be completely fine with having a gimmick power if the rest of the kit can pick up the slack. Take Gara's mirrors, for example. Completely worthless, but that doesn't exactly harm how batshit strong Gara is everywhere else. You are not it. And for what it's worth, Pulverize is goddamn hilarious. I don't know what it is exactly, but something about seeing a giant iron ball suddenly throw itself into a wall and bounce off of it while somehow gaining a massive speed boost in the process, it tickles the cockles of my heart. Anywho, Pulverize seems like it's trying to be a damage dealing CC hybrid power, but it can't really do either as well as other parts of this kit. And its clunky controls also hinder that as well. And it's funny because, um, Pulverize did get a minor buff, which is, once again, from one of my suggestions. Activating Nourish while you're inside a meatball will grant you a speed boost to your ball's movement. Now, you might be thinking, Trib, you idiot! Why didn't you suggest a buff for its range or damage or something? Well, my suggestions were creating a sort of priority in regards to his skills. See, I wanted his Expel and Regurgitate powers to be his primary damage-dealing tools, and Feast already served the purpose of a CC, and and still even does now. So instead of trying to force Meatball to be a competitive power over the other pieces of his kit, when, let's be frank, it wasn't designed to be practical, look at it! I decided to just embrace its meme status and say, fuck it, speed boost. So what I guess I'm trying to say is, if you don't like how Meatball turned out, uh, that might be my be. In closing, Grendel is probably gonna be a bit divisive for a lot of folk. On one hand, he eats very good. On another though, he is kind of a one-trick pony. Given how Feast is the ability that links into every other part of his kit, and that Feast also just so happens to be his best damage dealing power, yeah, you're gonna be fingering the shit out of your one button. Mind you, that's not necessarily a bad thing, since different people have different tastes in how a frame is designed. So for me personally, I prefer frames that have a balanced kit, but then again, I play Loki. But given that all I was expecting of Grindel was man eats man, man shoots man, I'm personally pretty happy with him. Though, if I could make one last suggestion, remove that noise!